2020 is going to be remembered as the year that it all went a bit mad. Life as we know it was topsy-turvy. I mean, people fell out of the sky. But more to the point, if you're a brand, you just want to stay afloat. You just want to make things and sell stuff by the volume. And Toyota is no exception to that rule. It's good at making lots, millions in fact, really sensible, reliable product. Apart from this one, this is the Toyota GR Yaris. The Yaris is a sensible name for a sensible car, but the, this car shares nothing, nothing really, with the Yaris that you and I know. And I'm almost certain that it won't make any money for Toyota, and that's why I love it already, having not even driven it yet. I'm Johnny Smith, this is The Late Break Show. Right, so what is the GR Yaris? By the way, GR stands for Gazoo Racing, not grrr, like a sort of pirate or a, an American wrestler. It's not that. Gazoo Racing run, the World Endurance Racing, so Le Mans, they've, they've just won Le Mans again this year, the third time. Uh, World Rally, which we'll come on to in a second. Um, and uh, NASCAR, lots of other disciplines. So what is this? Well, Akio Toyoda, the man who's at the top of Toyota operations from the Toyota family, he said, we believe rally is indeed the ideal arena to train people and improve cars. Toyota back in WRC to make ever better cars. He had a conversation with a bloke called Tommy Mackinnon and decided in 2014 that they need to go rallying again. They hadn't been rallying for 20 years. They hadn't made a four wheel drive road car for 20 odd years and that's what this is. Although it's called a Yaris, it isn't really a Yaris. It's got pretty much a completely different body shell, designed completely with the idea for homologation for world rally domination. Homologation for domination, that's good, isn't it? Okay, there's a standard Yaris. Yeah, standard Yaris hybrid. The Yaris is a car that you never look at, you never admire, it, they just exist, and they do what they do really well. That's what I love about this. I would never have featured a standard Yaris ever on the Late Break Show. So this car was allegedly reverse engineered. So they've, they've started off with what they need as the rally car and then they brought it back to, the, to a road car rather than being the other way around where you start with a car and then you kind of mutate it into a rally car, which is what's been the case for a lot of rally cars in the past. Toyota went, no, we'll do it the other way around. And they started off by really punishing it and seeing what it needs. And also how it needs to feel as a road car because Mr. Toyota himself was really, really hands-on with the development. And I don't know a big car company boss to do that since 1960s with Mr. Honda. Every angle you look at the GI Yaris, it looks sort of awkwardly purposeful in that same way that 80s and early 90s uh, rally homologation cars did. You know, short wheelbase Quattros, they looked a bit weird. They weren't beautiful. RS200 Fords, they didn't look great. They were functional. 6R4 Metros, they were, they were just angry. They weren't pretty. I think this has got a bit of that going on in it coupled with the sort of 90s era 
of Subaru Impreza WRX STI and the Mitsubishi Evo, which Tommy Mackinnon was famous for piloting, who was involved from the start in this project. The other GR products are fantastic. The GT86 is brilliant. In fact, there's a GT86 just coming up here. Um, a yellow one, there. And they're fabulous. But they are a collab with Subaru. The engines are Subaru. And the Supra, the GR Supra, fantastic car actually, better than people give it credit for. But again, it's a collab for the drivetrain with BMW. This isn't a collab with anybody. It's just Toyota being single-minded about what they want to achieve for the purposes of driving pleasure, but world rally. So Tommy Mackinnon, based in Finland, who runs the, the World Rally team, he came on board, well there were chats in 2014 with Mr. Toyota, which led to Toyota re-entering rally again in 2017. And since then, they've been doing really well. So they've got 2018 Manufacturers Championship World Rally, 2019 Drivers Championship, they're looking pretty good for the 2020 Championship. So since going into World Rally again in 2017, Toyota are doing pretty special things. And this is the version that kind of homologates all of that, that allows it all to happen. And yeah, it's got start-stop, which is mandatory, and it's got lane keep assist, which is blooming annoying. But it's also got some interesting stuff. I've picked a red car for this video because it shines better in the light, looks better on the video. You can buy it in two other colours, black, white, or red. I actually think the white looks best because there's lots of cool black bits. Okay, so the front end. This black, really quite square, oblongy mouth is shaped like this because that's the exact shape of the radiator, says Toyota. So that allows really efficient cooling. It's actually quite square given the rest of the car is quite aero. And then at the side here, you've got these ducts which go straight through, and these are real, these aren't fake. You know, a lot of hot hatches have fake winglets and stuff. There's nothing fake on this. This goes through to help cool the brakes, uh, and also in there's the intercooler. Okay, there's the heartbeat of the operation. Now, Toyota says that this has been designed, this is a 1.6 three-cylinder turbo, ball bearing turbo, no less, and the spec is, the detail is just bonkers, and that's because it's been designed to comply with WRC2 tech regulations. So it's a, it's a real motorsport bred powertrain, and rare that it's a three-cylinder. Well, here's some details. 257 brake horsepower, 265 pounds-feet of torque, which is 360 newton meters, but this is where it all gets so geeky. It's got lightweight pistons with wear-resistant rings, spherical chambers uh, in the pistons to develop to suppress turbulence, so they're a bit odd. Piston skirts with low friction surface treatment resin, and they've also been shot peened. Thinner outer block walls, block in the crank rigidity has been optimized. Two timing chain covers, shallow water jacket block uh, for bore ceiling enhancement. Concave radius camshafts, high strength con rods, all bearing turbo, like I said, to spin up uh, quicker and be stronger with abradable seals. Uh, bigger valves, eccentric valve seats, uh, uh, bigger valve exhaust valves, that is. Enhanced cooling with drill path construction between the cast iron liner bores. Uh, high tumble flow intake ports. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I have looked at the diagram and I still don't know. Increased pressure uh, with, uh, with good cooling throughout. So, yeah, it's obviously it's, it's intercooled. It's got direct and indirect injection. Uh, the angle and the pressure has been altered with the direct injection. So, it's 35 mpg car, apparently, but yet yeah, has all that power more used to being seen in a, like a two litre turbo than a 1.6 with, with three cylinders, not four. It's great when Japanese manufacturers like go full Japanese with the attention to detail. Minutia. <laughs> so in sport mode, it's still got a degree of traction control. There was a little flicker of the, the button just then. Low sun, do me, me climb dance, Ari Vatanen moment. The urgency of that turbo is amazing, considering you're only in a 1.6 triple, and we're over some hellish undulating back roads here. And I have to say, it's a firm car, which you'd expect for a car that's homologated, that's extreme 
but it's actually not uncomfortable because it's so short. When you look at the car from the side profile, it's crazy short wheelbase. Um, and like I said before, this roof line is totally different. The shell is totally different to a normal Yaris. Tommy Mackinnon said, if I'm gonna build you a proper rally car, Mr. Toyota, it's gotta be the shape I want. And he wanted the roof to be even lower than this. This is nearly 10 centimeters lower than the standard Yaris, but he wanted it even lower so that you could get that extra aerodynamics here on the rear spoiler. Wheels. Now this car that I'm testing today has the optional track pack, which means it comes with torsion and limited slip differentials, front and back. It comes with forged 18 inch alloys, these lovely sort of spider alloys. Again, there's this constant fight for lightweight. Aluminium bonnet, aluminium doors, aluminium tailgate, but through these spindly alloys you can see. Massive brakes, 356 millimeter, two piece ventilated brakes. These are bigger than the Supras even. Uh, and they're two piece to reduce weight and they've got the four piston red GR calipers. At the back, they're 297 mil and two pot calipers. Okay, let's get the things out of the way that I don't particularly like. It is quite uh, cheap looking in here and all the surf, there's loads of cubby holes and trays that look practical and then you realize they're all slippery and nothing would ever stay in them. So it's almost a joke because this is designed to be a super grippy car and yet no visibility's crap rear visibility's awful the rear window because of that roof line that desired roof line rear window is almost useless like a little letterbox c pillars are really thick windows are shallow instantly it feels special because it's so damn compromised this is not great yeah you, you know this is You've got navigation uh, on here, I think. It's not great. And if you order it with the track pack, the circuit pack, which has the tors and diffs and the forged 18s and stuff like that, um, you can't actually order it with a convenience pack, which has the head-up display and the heated seats and a couple of other bits. So you have to choose a pack. But I think if you're gonna buy it, you need to buy it with the rally bread componentry, the componentry which Toyota has kind of obsessively developed for the car, like really obsessively. Behind that brake is the suspension, which is pretty good. It's McPherson strut front end with a few additional tweaks. And in fact, the lower part of the wishbone has been um, heavily reinforced to cope with, I don't know, rallying. And then at the back, you've got a double wishbone set up with some extra uh, heavy duty bushes and things again to cope with more punishment presumably. This GI Yaris weighs 1,280 kilos. The whole point of this car is to kind of lean out weight where it isn't needed. Hence I guess frameless doors which just makes it ultra Japanesey. They love a frameless door. Carbon fibre, which only Toyota could specially weave, and they say it is a special weave, but it actually looks like artificial carbon fibre, so it doesn't even look real, but it is real. That saves three and a half kilos, and obviously that's high weight, which is reduced. The fastidiousness of detail on the build of the GI Yaris is mind boggling, but beautiful. Five and a half seconds to 62. Go on then. Yeah. That ball bearing turbo is fires up really quickly. You're reaching 70 mile an hour so quickly. And I know it's a cyclist. That's the thing, it's almost weird because Toyota have it's very Toyota with its safety and its efficiency, but at the same time, it's just like, yeah, come on. That's, that's the GR to me. The GR is.
Look, that says GR4. That's not the name of the car. That's just the name of the four-wheel drive system. And this is the first four-wheel drive car that Toyota has made in some 20 years. The last one being the, the Celica GT4, which was very successful in rally. In fact, that was the last properly, properly successful four-wheel drive car for Toyota in general. Really thin steering wheel. I love the feel of the steering wheel immediately with this sort of pronounced boss, the GR rim, leather. This is ultra suede on these GR bucket seats, which I think is not real suede. I think it's Alcantara. And then you've got this really super simple dial, plastic dial, which goes left for sport mode, right for track mode, and press the button for normal, which it defaults to. And they allow the torque bias of the four wheel drive system. So 50 50 is track mode, and apparently that's the sort of thing that you'd use in sort of gravel and snow, I guess, or if you're really on it on a circuit. And then it defaults to 60 front, 40 rear. Hello! <laughs> It almost sounds a bit like an Audi five cylinder when it's really raving. Red lines at seven. The pickup's really quick, you know. And it has that four wheel drive feeling where it's just, it feels screwed down. Now, this car takes 10 times longer to make, according to Toyota, than a normal, regular flavored Yaris. And that's because Gazoo Racing, they kind of take it off the line and then they spend extra time spot welding. There's 259 more spot welds on this car than there is on a regular Yaris hybrid. So for your pub quiz, you might want to know that there's 4,175 spot welds on the shell of this car. As I said, the shell is not the same as any other Yaris shell. It's bespoke. So much attention to detail has gone into the controls on the GI Yaris, which don't f have any resemblance on the normal Yaris controls. For a start, it's got an aluminium steering column and coupling. The feeling of the electro um, electric steering is, has been very carefully calibrated, and it is quite heavy, actually. I like it. It's heavy in a good way. The gear shift is solid, and again, it's got a weight to it, um, and it's quite short shift. It feels pleasantly kind of retrospective. The pedal box, Toyota or GR, Gazoo Racing, which sounds like Kazoo. I always think of Kazoo. They've positioned the pedal box, the throttle and the brake so that you can heel and toe apparently with ease. And they're right actually. So you're probably going, yeah, Johnny, this is great, you know, reliving the, the glory days of Group B Rally where you built a weird mutant road car to comply and go racing. But how much is it? Because you know these cars have a history of becoming classics because of their racing pedigree. Even though this car doesn't quite have a racing pedigree yet. Well, it's £29,995 in the UK. And whilst it isn't a limited edition car, it is what you'd class as a special order car. And if you want to order it with a circuit pack or track pack, that's an extra 3,500 quid. I like going into the dark with the GR Yaris, Gary Yaris, because I can't see so much of the dash. <laughs> it is gripped. It is gripped. It's wonderfully gripped and it's it's really comfortable despite the fact that it's yes it's stiff because of the nature of the car it's not like a real spine smasher which i like and it feels so different to some of its contemporaries and what are its contemporaries you know fiesta st is a another you know frisky fantastically energetic engaging b segment car which is this kind of size you have to go up a segment for all the other hardcore stuff like the Megane RS and the uh, Type R Civic, they're all much more expensive and they're also much physically bigger cars. I'm stuck behind another retired person with a National Trust badge on their Ford C-Max, which is a shame because this is an amazing road. 
at the back here, you've got this band of black where you almost can't notice the rear window. The spoil is actually quite restrained given how leery and mad the whole project is. These rear lights, like I said before, are the same as a normal Yaris, but that's where it all ends. Look, down here, real exhaust without any crappy shrouding on them, any pretend enlargement. It's real, it's a real pair of real exhausts, which is nice, isn't it? Keeping it real. When it's like that, it sounds like a little base model I go that, you know, fortunate students get bought for their 17th birthday. But then suddenly when you start to give it some beans, it just comes alive. And it really comes alive. Come on then. Come on. There's a lot of people that believe, myself included, that a car like this you get more satisfaction out of in a country like the UK than, you know, a bigger, more powerful sports car. Because this is 1,280 kilos, three cylinders with a really power-hungry, air-hungry snail strapped to it and it's got a ton of grip and it just feels right and it also it feels better than the faster you drive it actually yeah <laughs> i just want to spend more time with it unfortunately we haven't got it very long because of the world being mad at the moment and uh i'd like to spend a bit longer i'd like to drive it in the rain, I'd like to drive it in the mud. And that's when I would put it on track mode and I'd want to feel what 50-50's really like when the surface gets loose. I have a feeling that Toyota has created their very own Suzuki Jimny or Honda E. And when I'm, what I mean by that is a car that's instantly got such a buzz about it and people desire it even though they're not entirely sure whether it fits into their lifestyle and whether it's particularly usable for them, they don't give a toss, they still want it. And I'm starting to get that. I've, got, I've had that with the Honda E, and I've, I've, I've got that with the Suzuki Jimny, and I do think the Gary Harris will have it. Toyota has well and truly woken up and smelt some of that and gone, we are almost certainly not going to make money from this project but we're gonna do it to go successfully racing in the best racing arena of the world, I personally think, rally. It's a car born out of obsession. You've got mad, talented rally Finn, and then you've got detail-obsessed passion driver, Mr. Toyota over there. And this, this is their, uh, this is their creation. And I've got to be honest, I think it's going to be a classic as soon as it comes out because the, the lengths at which they've gone to to make this um, so faithful as a kind of road rally car, even though it doesn't have as big a wing as a Escort Cosworth did, and even though it's not like crazy looking like an RS200 was, I still honestly think that, that it's, it's up there, you know? So forget what this looks like. And forget practicality for a minute. You're buying a car that's rally bred. And it's a very special thing these days. It's a very rare thing these days. And because of that, I really love it. Thanks ever so much for watching The Late Break Show. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I haven't driven this car as much as I would have liked and hopefully I'll be able to get in it and have some more seat time soon. If you're a Patreon, thank you so much for supporting me through Patreon. There is a link in the description if you'd like to support me through Patreon. Um, the price of a coffee a month could help me do some more features, better features on this show. But anyway, enough of that. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>